All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome for another edition of Design Tips and Sips. I'm Anna Gibson, and I'm the owner of AKG Design Studio. And we are here to talk about design, interior design, kitchen, bathroom, anything that have to do with renovations, lifestyle, traveling, pretty much just about anything that we feel like it, right, Lori? And today we have our guest, uh, Lori Levine, and she is a licensed therapist. And I thought this is good timing to bring somebody that can chat with us about the unfortunately current situation that we are, that brings the good and the best in uh, everything that's going on around us. So uh, before we continue, Lori, what are you sipping on today? I am sipping on my LaCroix. LaCroix, all right. Taking Whoa, it easy. Oh. I, will, I will say this. My son uh -huh. is now a bartender, and he right. will be tending some bar later. But Okay, all right. So you, for the sip. you got to start. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay. So um, some people were asking me, so as some of you know, I developed uh, allergies, I don't know, whatever you want to call them to wine and uh, the last 10 years the last couple of years were really bad so i haven't had wine in a long time uh every time everybody's like oh try organic try this try that none of it is working it's like really makes me feel like sick and so i gave up wine and then this company came along it's called the one the one from Pure Wine, and they claim that they're gonna help me drink wine. So I ordered it. I had a lot of people were asking me, so we're gonna do a little unveiling here. Oh, I keep oh wait, 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 wait. So you are unveiling the wine right now? Yes. And if you get sick, I can't reach you to give you CPR. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's not that bad. I'm just probably gonna be sneezing, and then people, I just don't want people to think that I got like Corona in the middle of the show, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I'm like can't like if my nose become like really really you know that is like it's from the wine. So okay. uh since this we're drink we're eating barbecue late later lately, we're going all local. Thursday is our local and also talking about mental health, Thursday's no cooking for mommy. <laughs> so I'm not That's cooking a perfect mental health tool. Yeah, there is left, there's leftovers, there's whatever it is, and we're ordering out. So that's it. No dishes. It's called No Dishes Thursday. I like so, it. So um, I have a bottle of the Marlowe from Bull Run. It's another great local winery here. Uh, and apparently what you're supposed to do is take that little one out of the bag. It's So it's a little plastic you think it's almost looks like a tea like if you had a tea or something so i don't yeah. know if there's some kind of a chemical or something oh, okay that's... very cool yeah and you're supposed to put it in the wine and swirl it and it's supposed to release something and take everything so we're gonna leave it out for three minutes and then i'll try it in three minutes and if i'm not yeah, I have, I have to tell you what I'm laughing about. Makes me think of a pregnancy test. You know, when you have to wait 30 minutes for the pregnancy test. Yeah. So it's at 6:03. We at 6:06. I will. Uh, I'll give it a try. You'll know if you're pregnant. So, yes, I'll know if I'm pregnant and if I can drink wine. <laughs> So, Lori, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you located, maybe uh, a little about your family or wherever you want to tell us about yourself. Okay. So, I'm a licensed clinical social worker and I have a private practice in Herndon, right on the Herndon Reston um, border. Um, I work with teens and adults. I also work with children. Um, my favorite is sort of my favorite. I work best with older teens and adults, but I definitely see younger teens and children. I just, um, I find like the older teens are able to speak more and have more insight into what's going on. And they're sort of more open to therapy. Um, I have a um, kind of subspecialty with adopted children and teens. Oh, wow, okay, I didn't know yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, so I work with um, a lot of, um, you know, kids who have been adopted, mostly as babies or as young children. And then sometimes they find as they become adolescents, they have lots of 
you know, sort of curiosities or some abandonment issues. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's just a, a niche I've really enjoyed. Um, I work with a lot of also um, people who are, have anxiety or depression, um, people that struggle with grief um, and lots of like self-esteem. So a lot of teenagers who are feeling sort of low about themselves, we do a lot of work to help them improve their self-confidence. Okay, and that's very important because I actually, uh, I, I know somebody that has two teens uh, that were adopted and it definitely was a huge difference uh, for them as a teenagers, uh, really struggling with, and they knew that they're adopted, they were struggling with their identity uh, yeah. as they became teenagers and it, it was, it definitely became quite rough around the house. So uh, that's very important. Thank you for letting me know because it's yeah. really, really great resource to to have so now that we're all just everybody meg is very nervous about my white tasting <laughs> i won't die i promise <laughs> i might have a very very itchy nose so but i won't die um so sorry going back to the subject um so what happens now obviously people are not coming to your office right uh, right but at the same time people especially when we're cooped up in the home really need help to uh to get through those times it's been such an interesting dynamic i it, it, i can, i someday i may need to write a research research paper on it so um the people that I had been seeing regularly, I'm continuing to see virtually, and um, I've, I'm finding that this, 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 these platforms are working really well, um, so much better than the phone. I had one teenager say, you know, can we talk on the phone? And I said, why do you want to talk on the phone? And she said, because it feels awkward. And I said, well, if any time you're going to be awkward, it's going to be with your therapist. So let it be. And then she did it and it was fine because I just feel like, you know, we can sort of read people better. If they're on the phone, it's very hard to, I can just hear their voice, but this way I get their, their eye move, I, you know, I get it all. So that's been wonderful. Um, so many people say to me, uh, everybody's, you know, this is such a hard time. Everybody must be really, you know, knocking down your door. And I'm like, you know, no, they're not. And it's surprising to me. And I've been reading some articles and Actually, one article I read that sort of mental health is a huge part of this, and yet it's going to be sort of part two. I think that when we're in crisis, you know, we, we hold ourselves together and we're very sort of, uh, we're just holding ourselves together. And then sort of after the crisis is when everybody's like, what just happened? So it may be that um, I'll be getting more calls as this goes on longer. I don't know. Another thought I have is that people are really nervous and anxious, but again, they're like sort of just paralyzed in it and not feeling that need to call and say, I need to talk to somebody. And another thing I am worried about is finances. I mean, therapy is, you know, an investment. And if people are losing their jobs or not having income, although they need the therapy, it's sometimes they just, they can't afford it. So right. it's all very complicated. It's a big, big issue in this country that unfortunately mental health is not affordable. And that's why a lot of people are falling through the cracks and not getting uh, the help they need. And a lot of times it is teenagers as well. And, and those people that need the help the most that are the people that cannot afford it. And, and, and this those is really exciting. This is really exciting what you just said. I wanted to share this. So yes. I work with a grant through Fairfax County. There's a program called Healthy Minds. And for very um, sort of low income, high risk students, they offer Fairfax County offers free therapy. So oh, wow. the, it's a grant and the, um, the county pays me um, a reduced fee, but you know, they're still paying me to see their clients. So I see mm, I'd say on my caseload, anytime I have between three or four, three, four, or six clients that are through this um, this program. So it makes me very happy as you were talking about teens who really need it, who can't afford it. Um, it's just been a really warm part of my practice. That's awesome. And I, I shared it in the comments, but I'll share it later on on the post as well. And I'll find a link for that as well, because okay. uh, th that is that is really, really fantastic. This is really, really great to know. So, uh, yeah, so, okay, so we're all cooped up at home. 
what are and as you said i think like it's almost like when you're in a car crash right it happened like boom nobody was expecting it it was like from zero to 150 uh with no really any warning and preparation uh so really i feel it's almost it is like a car crash like you got like immediately and then now all the adrenaline is yes. going like crazy so just like you said that we're all in that fight or fly trying to figure out what to do with ourselves. right so what are some of the things that we can do to kind of go back what can we do now even if, even when the adrenaline is still rushing and we're not really feeling it what can we do can to try to figure out okay are we really in that crisis that like okay i can really when it's all done i can get up and walk and i'll be okay or i'm going to end up in the emergency room and right. again right. that's all yeah. metaphoric well it's it's you know one thing is some of us it's so good that we're talking about this because perhaps some of us don't even realize that we're in this crisis mode you know like you said it's like you know school was canceled jobs were canceled we can't go out everybody's cooped up in the home People are trying to figure out how to teach their children and feed their children. And yeah, it's like, who has time to stop and think um, what's really happening? So right. yeah, everybody is sort of in that mode. Um, and we've taught, we've been talking about this, you know, take care of yourself. We've got to do the self care, take a shower. <laughs> you know, some people, you know, take a shower, get dressed sometimes, not every day, but many days, um, you know, get outside. I have teenagers that are sitting in their rooms 24 seven on repeat. I say, have you gone outside? Oh, my mother's on my case. I say, go outside, just go outside. Two kids now have told me that they have hammocks. So they'll be lying on their hammocks. And I said, good, you need the air. You know, most of the adults are getting out. Um, but sometimes the teens, you know, they just get stuck on Netflix. And so I just, you know, I, I, Netflix is great. I believe me, I'm doing it too, but not, oh, and the other thing is, oh my God, I just talked to a kid, uh, an hour ago. They're going to bed at six 30 in the morning. They're staying up till four or five, six in the morning. They're sleeping till two or three. I said, what are you going to do when life becomes real again? You know, so all the kids are doing it. And, and and I said to her, I said, well, are your parents, <clears throat> are they fighting you? And she said, what are they going to do? I said, you know, you're right. <laughs> so. right. Yeah. And I have a teenager and, and it's exactly what it is. I do try to, you know, they do have school in Fairfax County twice a week. Yeah. So I do try to wake her up any, no matter what. So obviously the day she has school, she wakes up nine, but the day she doesn't have school, I do try to wake again, wake her up between nine to 10 and so some of the things that we implemented in our house is that we all have dinner together every day at six. Good. Uh, and it's, it's really fantastic because nobody's in a rush. So even if we had that dinner like once a week, now those dinners are every day and it's like half an hour, an hour dinner that we're just sitting and just chatting and goofing off and talking about like the funniest thing that, you know, and really a lot of it is just listening to her. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, and it doesn't have to be really deep or anything. And then we usually do a movie together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but you know, she, I, I, I'm the last one to talk about going late cause I am a night owl. So mm -hmm. it's easy for me to mix that. But because my daughter got that for me, we actually have really fun conversation at two o'clock in the morning. Oh, well, good. Because <laughs> <laughs> at two o'clock in the morning, she actually wants to talk to me. I right, don't know right. why, but I'm like, okay, I'll take it. But yeah, but I think, yeah, trying to, to stick to some kind of a schedule, yes. whether it's for adults or children. Uh, and I do feel the days that I do start early uh, versus on the later, I'm more productive. Uh, the sunshine, we also got a hammock and a, like a little swing. So finally, after the snowstorm or whatever craziness coming our way uh, is going to go, we should be able to uh, to sit out there and uh, and enjoy that weather. We do make her walk the dog, so she goes out uh, a little bit. And again, I think it everything that is for teen is also really uh, 
works for adults as well. Yeah. So let's see. Jennifer said that uh, she heard another foundation called Trey J. Henson Foundation. So um, I will uh, I will find a link for that and I'll post it for there. So it's been more than six minutes. I did take the one out. So see, um, my nose is each is just thinking about one. <laughs> <laughs> and Meg said that she's drinking Barriccio de Tati Pimonte Barbara from the wine cabinet. So wine cabinet is a fantastic wine store here in Reston. And they have fabulous collection. And if you go there, they'll open your account and write down what you uh, what you order. So then you can actually uh, remember what you uh, order and what you like. So Wait, before you drink, yes. maybe we should do Barret Puri Hagafen. Yes. <laughs> and Jennifer is drinking uh, rosé from, I know, 50 Ways is like, I think it's one of your favorite, right? Jennifer, she lives right down the road from there. So, uh, okay, I have to say it tastes so good. <laughs> so, okay, so we are drinking alcohol and laughing about it, but do you, like i don't know there was a crazy survey that said that virginia is like the top drunk people really yes yeah but 50 percent of people that are at home during the coronavirus are uh drinking alcohol so what i know we're using it as a coping mechanism at some point uh where does the line crosses between okay i had one glass of wine i enjoyed it to like three bottles a night again very yeah. difficult situation because we all feel like we're on extended vacation right. so. i think uh, um the the sort of the line that we therapists always sort of um, go back to is is our, is it impacting our functioning, right? If I'm having a glass of wine or two a couple times a week, but I'm still getting up and I'm doing my exercise, I'm taking care of my kids, I'm doing my work, you know, from home, you know, or am I, you know, sloppy drunk all night long, sleeping till mid, you know, till midday. My kids are, you know, my young kids are walking around in diapers and not being fed. You know, that's the line. You, as long, we got to keep functioning. Um, you know, and a lot of times it's like alcohol, food, whatever our drug of choice is, is to numb the feelings. So, am I that anxious? that I'm using food or I'm using alcohol to make it so I don't feel anything. And perhaps a little bit, moderation. Moderation is a word we always use, but you know, if you're sort of passed out drunk every single night, that's too much. <laughs> in, my, in my opinion, you know, I, you, I think um, an alcoholic or someone who has trouble with alcohol needs to self-identify. So I can't, you know, necessarily say that about somebody else, but those are sort of the tricks of the trade. Yeah. So is there anything that somebody, if they obviously realize that they're doing it and they're home, is there anything that they can do before they kind of like get off the deep end? You know, I know it's a very complicated uh, matter, but is there anything that, like, if you're at home and you're starting to notice uh, that you are, you know, you're probably delving a little bit too much? What right. are some of the techniques that we can, and whatever, and again, it can be eating. I can see, I see also a lot of people. Everybody's cooking, everybody's eating, and I, uh, I'm not much of a drinker, but I definitely know that in the first couple of weeks, I, if they said the Corona. The, the corona, what do they call the corona 15? Mm -hmm. I'm halfway there because right. I am definitely dealing it with it with eating. And the last couple of weeks have been much better, but it took me a couple of times going up on the scale, and they're like, Okay, I still need to fit into my clothes. After right. So, uh, what are some of the things that we can do to uh, after we identify that there is a problem? Well, certainly, um a 
hallmark of the Alcoholics Anonymous program is to be get a buddy. They call it get a sponsor, but get a buddy. If you feel like you are drinking, if you if you feel like you need to have a drink, need to have a drink and can't stop, certainly, you know, the best thing to do is to say it out loud. You know, you call Anna, I'm struggling. What am I going to do? I, I, you know, and then, you know, so just saying it out loud, saying I'm worried, um, talking to somebody else about it, not keeping it a secret. That's an excellent first step. Um, Alcoholics Anonymous is all over the internet. I'm, you know, there's virtual meetings and I think there are actually still some in, in person meetings, but, um, great resources. Um, and then of course there's, you know, there's therapists, there's substance abuse therapists. Um, there are people there to help you, but you know what? Sometimes it's really hard to want to get the help. You know, right. it's hard. Yeah. Food, food too. Yeah, absolutely. So what can we do? I'm trying to think about like, you know, especially food and alcohol. So obviously, you know, alcohol, it's easier is like, don't bring alcohol into the house. Right. Uh, especially now if we are, you know, if you're going to shop only once a week, just skip that ABC stores, mm -hmm. skip the, the alcohol uh, aisle in the, uh, in the grocery store. And, but I guess it is a little bit harder with food because we still need to, right. we all need some food to st sustain ourselves. Right. Uh, so I guess it is making some kind of a decisions of, yeah, I mean, you know, that, you know, there's a, a lots of research and talk about, you know, food addiction versus alcohol addiction, alcohol addiction, you can do cold, you can stop. Right. But food, we still have to feed our bodies. Um, you know, of course, it's always easier to say, you know, fruits and vegetables, low fat, low carb and all that. But sometimes it just tastes really good. And when you're stuck at home, you want to bake, you know, yeah. again, moderation, you know, you don't want anybody completely restricting, but moderation for everything is just sort of a good, you know, a good way to go. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that, that in our house, that's only everything is a, the, that's the rule of thumb. Like you can do anything in moderation. Yeah. Um, you know, you're the expert runner, you know, the athlete, you know, even I have, now, is it, it's in moderation because yeah. I've seen a lot of people, especially in the, the triathlon world that, substitute alcohol and drug abuse with with triathlon yeah over exercising and they exercise you know i won't say they exercise to death but they're definitely those are the people that get injured and and end up not feeling well and over exhausted because they're pretty much taking all their time and converted it from right. that particular into into the working out right i mean so, addicted personalities it does sometimes it doesn't matter what it is it's just yeah. yeah so we have a question here from Meg Donnelly uh not the Meg Donnelly well she is the Meg Donnelly for us she's our Meg Donnelly right yes. uh so as phase one opening uh happens many businesses are feeling new pressure and anxiety surrounding opening and decided to still not see clients in person. Do you have any advice for dealing with that? So a lot of us business person people are having anxiety regarding going back to work. Uh, some of us, um, some of our friends have employees. Uh, how do we deal with that kind of anxiety? And um, that's a huge one. And that's such a huge one because you know you want to protect your health. And protect your employees health but then you also want to protect their economic well-being as well you know i love the places that are able to do you know take out only you know or like you know the tea shop is 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 delivering tea and stuff like that i mean i personally i'm not ready to go back out in the world um and i'm really grateful and i'm really fortunate that i can continue to see clients you know this way so I'm lucky, um, but there are so many people that aren't in the same place as me. So with the anxiety, it's huge. This is a big one. This is, and there's no right answers. You know, you have to listen to what's right for you. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with that kind of anxiety? So we talked about going for walks. Yeah. Um, sunshine. Sunshine is good for Corona, apparently so as well. Okay. Uh, so, you know, going for a walk, fresh air, 
Um, is there any other exercises that you can do or something that's a little bit more deeper than? Well, uh, I mean, there's a lot of the, the, the keyword is mindfulness. Okay. There's mindfulness practices, which is breathing, which is slowing down. You can download some um, meditation app apps, and those are really good for slowing down for if you're feeling really anxious and you're feeling, you know, in your chest or in your head, wherever you feel it, feeling it build up, you want to just slow down. Oh, this is something that I've talked about in the past about grounding. If you're feeling so, so, so anxious, you can't sort of get your mind off of what's next, what's next, thinking about the future. I do this thing called grounding, the five senses. What do you hear right now? What do you see right now? What do you smell right now? What do you taste right now? And what do you feel right now? And what that does is, because when your mind is racing, 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 what anxiety is, it's thinking about the future. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? And then, and then you get all riled up. Grounding brings you back to the present right now. So bringing yourself back to the present with that tool and then trying to do some very slow, deep breathing is a technique to bring you right back to the present. Because you know what? We can't control the future. We don't know what stores are going to open up and who's going to get sick and what schools are going to open. We, can, we can't control it. We just worry about it. Right. And worrying never really gets us anywhere. Right. So bringing it back to the present, the present of having your lovely dinner with your family and laughing, playing a game of Uno, you know, watching a silly movie. That's in the present. That's all we've got. We can't control what's going to happen next. Now, granted, it's easier said than done because we all worry about what's next. But slowing down is a way to, you know, lessen the, the craze. Right. Yeah, somebody once told me that like being stressed and anxiety is like sitting in a rocking chair. There's a lot of motion, but you're not going anywhere. Right? Because you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But there's like, it's just, you know, but you're not moving. There's no motion. I love that. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that. So maybe you're kind of like taking the, yourself back into the rocking chair and going through the five senses. Yep. I think this is really awesome because then. Maybe you'll enjoy that rocking and enjoy that sunshine and enjoy that time outside uh, versus get, getting into uh, almost sp getting into that spinning feeling that, that you have. And, and I know like somebody posted a while back uh, when it all started, like I think it was like nine photos of Britney Spears in different stage of, of her life. And they say, with Britney Spears you are today, <laughs> I said, I'm everything. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it starts, comes down and then it goes up. And then I just want to shave my hair and now my hair is purple. <laughs> and, and then I'm shaving my husband's hair and like, you know, all this craziness is happening. So, yeah. So I think it's really important for us to stay uh, mindful. Some of the things that we can do as far as our interiors. Uh, and this is some of the things that we, we also talked with Janet, the organizer last week is, uh, keep your space organized. Uh, people don't realize how clutter really affects your emotion and it clutters your soul. So this is a great time for you to, if you're not feeling well, if you want to procrastinate or doing on some work, maybe work stuff that you do, that's a great time to go and yeah, actually fold laundry and put it away versus looking into that pile because honestly looking at that pile of laundry is stressing you out more than you actually realize so taking that few minutes to go and put this laundry away and coming into a well nice organized room is it's going to be wonderful for you uh we make sure that even to this day no matter what we always make the bed in the morning so the only day that like the days maybe not going to be make, getting made is a, on a Sunday. So the Sunday is like, you know, kind of an upside down uh, day here. But really every morning when I get out of bed and I'm the last one, uh, I always make the bed. So when I come back in the evening, I feel relaxed. Uh, this is something that we also do before we travel. Now we don't travel anywhere, but we always make sure that the house is super organized. So when we come back and we have all this luggage and stuff to unpack, 
it just takes a couple of minutes to organize. Um, also, we talked about alcohol. So remove the, re removing the alcohol, removing all those visual cues for yourself around the house, that's going to be really helpful for you. Same thing is in the kitchen. Um, I know it's really hard in the kitchen, and I know it's really hard if you are on social media. Sometimes it's like I don't eat after 8 o'clock, and I still see everybody's evening feed and dinner, and I'm like, stop posting food after eight o'clock in the evening. I don't want to eat anything. Uh, so try to avoid those visual cues. Maybe in your kitchen, try to clean the countertop, put all the leftovers away, put food away, make sure it's out of sight. Cause a lot of time out of sight is out of mind. So it's easier for us not to uh, jump back. And you know, like I've seen funny things with people posted on the refrigerator that like sign that says uh think about your summer buddy or your bikinis waiting for you or mm -hmm. something goofy like that that like before you open the refrigerator one more time you're like okay maybe not and kind of like uh go backwards with uh with that uh yeah so creating yourself uh maybe creating yourself a serenity space somewhere around the house whether it's out maybe it's outside by the hammock uh adding some plants usually helps a lot for relaxation uh green is usually a good color to help you relax uh green peach very soothing color uh so just bring some new plants go out garden that's usually really helps you uh, come down and just help you ground yourself. Even just go and stand out bare feet on the grass. Just a few minutes. Connect with Mother Earth. I know I sound totally crunchy granola, but it, it works. It's literally grounding, right? <laughs> literally grounding. Right. Uh, I'm the mom that sends my kids since she was very young. I have a very good child to go and get in trouble. So uh, because they're sitting at home all day, I feel they're not getting in trouble. <laughs> so I'm like, go TP the house, go, you know, do stuff. So she did one day that, well, that was a while ago. She literally, uh, it wasn't, it was pre-corona. Uh, so uh, she pretty much finished all the eggs. She just egged the tree in the forest. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. I'll go by. I'm like, if this is the worst you can get in trouble, <laughs> I'll take it. It's an excellent way to get the aggression out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, why not? Why not? I, I'm curious, how is your nose? Um, I'm okay. Um, my nose is okay. My feet, usually red wine goes to my feet and I'm okay. So, cool. okay, people, I'm okay. I'm like, Maybe not even halfway. I just had a little bit. I was right at that silver line, and I'm still okay. Usually, it's quite immediately. So, so maybe uh, this is the answer. The one. Maybe this is the answer. So I will post a follow up later tonight and let you know. Um, on the flip side, though, can you talk about the theory that you are supposed to keep food out to learn how to avoid it? Hmm. So if you're looking at something all the time. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that. Yeah. It's like, it's like okay. temptation. Yeah. I don't know, Meg. I don't think we're... Uh, those wine glasses came from um, Andy's house uh, when that was one of the few things that we saved from his stuff. And I actually managed to save them from... Um, from the dumpster. So my husband is a big uh, when in doubt, throw it out. So <laughs> when we moved in together, we had two household to merge. And when I came to visit him one day, he literally was putting furniture down the uh, trash chute in his building. Um, since then, he did trash some things around the house that he shouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> So he's the opposite of the hoarder people. So uh, that's where we're talking about. Yeah, we talked about balance and about moderation, right? Right. right. So uh, definitely, uh, yes. So Natalie says she couldn't agree more. No clutter. Um, Meg said that she's happy that I'm not dead from the wine. And, and I think we are, yeah, we're a little bit over 35 minutes. 
Hi, child. Bye, child. You have 30 seconds to wait. Okay. Bye. <laughs> she wants to do laundry. Woohoo! You don't complain about that. I don't complain about that. So, all right. So, yeah, we're actually done. So, thank you again, uh, Lori. So, Lori, tell us right before we uh, end it, uh, where, again, where can we find you? Where can oh, people okay. connect with you? And we'll post it also as okay. well. So, the best place is my website. It's Lori Levine. What is my website? Lori Levine LCSW.com. I think that's Lori Levine LCSW.com. That's the best place. Um, then there's the contact there. My phone number is there. All that. That's my best spot. Perfect. And then, as we said, you're still taking clients. Yes. You're using Zoom. So that's a great way. So even if you're at home, uh, that's a great way. It doesn't have to be a prolonged um, you know, sessions. It can be a couple of sessions. Oh, yeah. uh, if you're not doing yeah. well, if you need advice about your teenagers, uh, I know that Lori always uh, open to uh, to help. So this is us here. Um, my head hurts, teeny weeny, teeny weeny. So I, you know, I do have ten of those here, <laughs> and they did send me another five for free. So that means that I have fifteen glasses of wine to pass. <laughs> Well, you'll keep us posted as as the, as the glass goes down. Yeah. So, uh, cheers, cheers, and thank you again for joining us uh, with uh, Design Tips and uh, Sips. We're here every Thursday at six p.m. Uh, we're live on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, so if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe, 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 so you can get the notifications on all the new shows that are coming. Uh, if you have any subjects that you want to talk about, if you want to be a guest on the show, just PM me. Uh, and if you want to connect with any of the experts that have been on our show or with me, uh, all the information will be posted uh, below as well. So you're welcome to reach out to them. So thank you, everybody. Have a fabulous day. And we'll see you next week. Bye.